All right, welcome back. This is part two of my uh, mobile miter bench build series. So just to remind you what we're working towards here, this is an entirely mobile uh, miter bench kind of work surface. It's got quite a bit of countertop. It's got drawers with uh, you know very sturdy uh, drawer pulls that I can store lots of tools and stuff inside of. It's got a cabinet on this side where I've been putting power tools and other kinds of stuff. It has a dust hood and a downdraft thing, system uh, that I can connect to my dust control. And it has this extendable countertop so that it can be quite big uh, when it's all expanded and put to use. Um, so in part one of this series, we basically just built the plywood carcass and put the countertops and uh, the, you know, leveled everything to the miter saw. Um, in part two, I think we're going to work towards the dust control system. So uh, I'll talk about this dust hood, although you can more or less see how to build it. We'll talk about the downdraft and how I designed that. And I guess we'll probably, I don't think we put on the, the folding table uh, in the first video, so we probably can get that done. Um, the drawers are a bit more involved, and so we'll get to those in part three of this video series. Um, so let's get into it. All right, so I'm very much kind of designing this on the fly. Um, I went to YouTube, watched a few videos of what other people are doing. And like I said, I want this to be like a mobile kind of wood shop for uh, when I'm no longer at a fixed location with a garage. And a lot of people are building dust hoods, right? So you could imagine a box, which I've already kind of cut out the pieces for. The basic idea is that the sides are going to enclose in the miter bench, kind of come flush with here. The same on the other side. This back piece is obviously going to have to have something cut out of it so that it's going to go back and forth. Um, and then it will have a roof. And I think I'm going to actually make like a little downdraft table in here. And we can talk a bit about the dimensions as we go. But yeah, the dimensions, the depth is going to depend on how where the fence of your miter saw is. The height is going to depend on the height of your miter saw. Uh, and then, of course, right, you're going to have to kind of cut into the back part so that the miter saw can go back and forth. Right, so there does need to be a bit of an opening in the back so that the miter saw can go out. And all of that's going to depend on the shape and size of your miter saw. So I can't really give you measurements for that. But hopefully this gives you some inspiration about what, how you could kind of design your own on the fly. All right, so working on the back of the uh, dust cover. So you can see I sort of tried to trace around. Um, but it is basically four and a half up from the bottom. So you can see my rough tracing. Uh, the width is like five and a quarter. So this is 20. So if I come in by seven, that gives me six inches, right? So it's about five and a quarter, five and a half wide. This way it is centered. Its height or its thickness let's say about two and a half tall. not, with my saw and the way I've got it positioned, that little rectangle that's about six by two and a half inches should be more than enough to let, uh, to let it come in and out but still have the dust cabinet mostly collected uh, or mostly closed. Um, so I guess let's get the jigsaw and cut that out. The bench is already coming in handy. So we've rough cut the whole jigsaw. 
That is pretty perfect. So there's a bit of space, but this can now slide in of the dust cabinet. So go ahead and get this put together. All right, so I'm going to basically put this together the same way I put the main cabinet together, except we're going to use glue and brads uh, just to start, and then I'm going to put screws into it. So, yeah. Obviously, you want to measure this, like adding on the thickness of the plywood, right? So the way I'm doing this, and you could do it different ways. I'm putting the lid or the, the roof kind of on the outside, but you could put it on the inside. Either way you're doing it, you want to account for that in your business. So just a couple little pins to hold this in place. Brads are not the main way this is going to be joined. Jigsaw, so I have complete movement. Um, it was not designed for anything other than 90 degree cuts, though. So, as you can see, yeah, cannot do anything other than 90 degree cuts, but that's okay. We designed it that way. The goal of this is that it's removable. So, if I need to make anything other than a 90 degree cut. If I'm working outside where dust is not as much of a problem, then I can take it off. All right, so I've been thinking about what to put on the front of this, and to be honest, I've got this piece uh, that I ripped down for the sides of the drawers, and it's almost perfect. So I think I'm gonna leave this front open. I am going to put a bead of glue on this and some brads to tack it in place. And then screws. There we go, those are one and a quarter inch screws, countersunk. Uh, if you care what this looks like, you could use pocket holes and, and hide them if you want it. So this is five inches deep. And just to show you, it just barely 
doesn't fit. So I've got like maybe half a centimeter that I can't lift it up. But for the most part, this exists inside. So um, I think what I didn't show is that I've got just the, uh, the cable, or like rather the plug is just going out the hole that I cut for 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 the um, rails to go back. All right, so I want to make a downdraft table that is kind of inside where my dust hood is. So we could do a little bit of trigonometry, which I bet you all thought was useless. So the shop back hose that I have for my dust collection is 2.5 inches diameter. So again, all of these calculations are going to depend on what kind of dust collection you have, right? I think different shop backs have different diameters. If you have a proper dust collection system, my understanding is those are quite a bit bigger. But 2.5 inches in diameter leads to uh, area using pi r squared, right? r being half the diameter, of about 4.9 square inches. So that's the area of this. If we take a half inch drill bit, the area of the hole that that makes using the same formula is about 0.2 inches square, which means if I make 24 half inch holes in the area behind my, uh, in, in the area under my dust hood, that I should have basically the exact same area as this. The hope being that those 24 holes, basically this area spread out across 24 smaller holes, right? Imagine 24 of these drill bits kind of organized up inside. The, the hope then is that by having those 24 holes that, that I shouldn't lose any suction, right? That the shop back should have the same suction through the 24 holes that it would have through the one bigger hole. So, isn't math fun? Okay, so I took the miter saw out. I sort of traced around the back of it. Right, so the miter saw will take up this space and this will be kind of open. And so I basically drawn out like a, a two inch kind of grid uh, where I can put holes to uh, for the downdraft part. So yeah, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wide, and one, two, three, four, five uh, down. But because there's this kind of arc here, it actually works out to 25 holes. But if I leave this one out, then there's my 24. So, so I'm just going to go ahead and drill those. All right, so here we go. 24 half inch holes adds up to the same area as my two and a half inch shop pack dust collector. And yeah, so let's get the miter saw back on here. Awesome. All right, so here we are underneath of where the table saw is. So, uh, need to drill a hole for this two and a half inch kind of coupler for the shop pack. And you could do this a lot of ways. Jigsaw is probably the easiest for a DIYer, but I went and got this two and a half inch um, saw bit. I, I'm probably gonna build a few more of these cabinets. And so if you think you might be doing this a few more times, um, I do think this will just make the drilling a bit easier. So this is roughly centered. All right, so as you probably saw, this thing is slightly tapered. So while this opening is two and a half, at the very back, it's closer to probably two and three quarters. All right, there we go. So yeah, I just used the jigsaw to widen up the hole by, I don't know, a couple millimeters. And now we can go ahead and attach this. I'm going to do that off camera because this isn't a good angle to film at. All right, so here's the back. Uh, this is installed from the front and, and check it out. I can now connect my dust control to this. So a little bit of testing and it's become clear that 
the dust collection is definitely going to benefit from some <coughs> uh, air tightness. And so I have this uh, all-purpose uh, latex caulk and silicone left over from another project. I am just going to seal up all of these. So there we go. This thing should now be air and watertight, which I think is going to improve the ability of this to actually work as a downdraft, right? Because now I have a sealed vacuum inside of there all the way back to the shop vac dust collection system. So this should generate a lot more suction than my initial tests when I, when I didn't have this all sealed. All right, so it is obviously not easy to get uh, a shot inside at the downdraft table, but I am pretty sure that people are going to want to know if this works. And what I've learned is that seeing is very much believing on a YouTube channel. So I've just got some two by fours that I need to cut for another project. So um, I'm going to turn on the dust collecting system. Um, which is going to be very loud and we're going to make a couple of cuts and you can get a sense for how well this works. Okay, so I've turned off the dust collection system. You can see that it's by no means perfect, but you'll notice that what it does do is, you know, suck these little circles around, and it really does a pretty good job at containing the, the dust. Um, so there's very little, if I turn, there's very little that actually made it out onto the table. And I actually have HEPA filters that I bought. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about air quality during the pandemic. So I have HEPA filters that sense air quality and they don't come on anymore when this dust collection system is on. So what you can do now that it's sort of contained in here is you know, get a little brush or what I often do is I just start blowing into it. So I'm gonna turn the dust collection system back on and I'll show you how easy it is to clean up. Yeah, so all I did was, you know, blow into there and it uh, basically moved the dust around, collected it, and it's now in my dust collection system. So this downdraft table, it's not perfect, but it really does quite a good job compared to not having uh, something like this in the miter bench. So I'm pretty happy with how this is working. So we're over on the right side of the miter bench um, and I've, I've got these brackets. Uh, again, I'll, I'll put a link down in the description. Um, but yeah, these 90 degree brackets, they've got this little handy fold down option. And um, I think they're rated to hold like 300 pounds. So the plan, I suppose, is just to line these up with the top. I don't think there's any trick to this. Um, you can see I've got some pilot holes drilled. Let's put this one on first for the sake of filming. Yeah, 
And I, um, when I drilled the pilot holes, I already uh, made marks to make sure that these are uh, square. So, I don't know, I think I measured a couple inches in from the side, but I honestly don't think it matters how you space these from the side. The only thing that matters is that this is sort of flush with the top one when it's open. All right, so my drill bit can't reach this top screw. So, I'm gonna do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so I didn't get any footage of screwing it into the board, but uh, I think you can get the idea. So this is a nice little um, latching system. Can just go up and down and all that really matters is that if you're going to use this as part of the part of the miter bench you, you really need this to be square so all told when this is extended the whole working space uh, is almost 70 inches so yeah it's almost six feet wide in terms of working space on both sides of the miter bench but this folds down so that, uh, yeah, when it's stored, you, the thing is, yeah, when it's stored, that's not in the way. All right, so there you go. In this video, we got the dust hood built. We got the downdraft table kind of set up and, and tested, and it, it's working as well as I would hope. And we got this extendable bench that, uh, you know, extends the work surface out to like I said, 70 inches. So um, that's probably enough for this video. In the next one, we'll get the cabinet and the shelves and the drawers built, and then uh, this miter bench will be um, finished. So if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it, do all that kind of stuff. Um, I know this isn't a perfect build, so I welcome any comments uh, about what I could do better or how to learn, right? This is, this is how we learn. So. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.